Welcome to Authors Revealed, I'm Becky Anderson. We are so thrilled, two of our favorite middle grade authors are here. Those are those books that are great for that fourth grade reading level up to that seventh grade reading level. It's Kristen Kitcher and Kate Hannigan. Welcome to Anderson's in Naperville. Oh, it's great to be here. Thanks so much for having oh us. Oh my gosh, this is really fun. I think this is so cool that four of you are touring together, yeah. um, middle grade authors. So those, you know, authors that are writing for those kids that are still just love reading and yeah. are so excited about it. So that, you know, that 8 to 10, 11, 12 year old age, which I think is such the sweet, pot, sweet spot for, for kids. It really is. Yeah. And so was it like touring together, the four of you? Because it, it must be really well, fun. Well, this was, I, you know, The Wig in the Window came out a little while ago. So yeah. this was really, I was here in town for Nerd Camp in yeah. Michigan. That's what I've heard uh, about that Nerd Col Camp. That yeah. Colby Sharp and Donalyn Miller uh, run over there in Parma, Michigan. So this was an extra bonus okay. when Trisha and uh, Tracy uh, invited me to come join and then I invited Kate because we were doing some mystery events related yeah, to it. Yeah, yeah. So uh, but so we're not we're not traveling all together yet um, uh, okay. but we've had a wonderful time. Uh, Nerd Camp is incredible because they 700 kids came to and converged on one whole right. high school and we had a fabulous time yeah. with them teaching writing. No, Trisha workshops. was talking about it. It sounds absolutely yeah. incredible. So yeah. it's exactly what you described that sweet spot of excitement. Yeah and yeah. So you can totally nerd out and feel really yeah. good about it, which you should. You yes. know, with that sort of thing. I taught really, um, yeah. seventh grade a long time, so yeah. Yeah. that was right. it's fun to get in there yeah. and be back in the classroom. Right. So the wig in, in the window, you know, this is your your, your debut novel, um, and it's been out for a few few months. So so what, what does it feel like to have that book out in the world now and have that first book out there? Because I know the sequel, the next book of the series yes, is coming. Yes, that so. I so carefully brought. Very here. good. I love that product <laughs> placement. Exactly. Very nice. The wig the wig in the window. It's been inc an incredible experience. That I you know you don't think of it when you're sitting in your room typing at that keyboard of what what. Yeah. Um, what it would be like to share and actually it's really special to be here in particular and one of the reasons I wanted to come was that um, maybe on the very first day the wig in the window came out a fan um, a, a, I mean a girl um, bought it I think here um, and she wrote a little review of it in the and it got printed in the Chicago Tribune oh, and I saw that and then they emailed me they left a review or they oh, contacted cool. me and so she's coming here tonight it's two years oh, later oh, that's and it's so the first cool. time I'm yeah. gonna get to meet um, meet her oh so, that's wonderful yeah. so the book's been out since January so you are you're getting this no the January of last year no, it's it's 2013. Jane, okay. Yeah, so, so the it's, January uh, 2013. June. Right. That's, uh -huh. Okay. So yeah. you know you've heard a lot from kids, mm -hmm. and so what are you, what are you hoping that kids will with the second book? Can you tell us a little bit about what you'll hope kids will get from the second book? From we, the second because book, because we have our two favorite characters back here. We have them back, yeah. and uh, and along with Trista Bottoms, the friend from the first one, joins okay. them in this. All right. Um, what am I hoping? Well, I hope the same thing that I like providing a kind of off the rails fun experience that feels high stakes and uh, a little more complex of a mystery yeah, for the age group yeah. that doesn't condescend to them. So I hope they feel that they're reading a real yeah. strong mystery that has a lot of twists and turns. Um, and this this uh, all takes place in Pasadena, set around the Rose Parade, oh, wonderful. which I call the Winter Sun Festival. Yeah. Uh -huh. And um, it's Young and Yen go undercover, sort of Miss Congeniality style, if you remember that movie a long yeah. time oh, ago. Yeah, okay. um, and since yeah. they're not really girly girls, they go and they are um, basically trying to solve a murder that oh. nobody knows is a murder. So uh, I hope they oh, just yeah. enjoy the yeah. kind of high stakes and fun. Yeah. So Sophie and Grace, very different from each other. Yes. You know, they're sort of I think it described as the yin and yang, very yes. different from one another. Right. So where did, where did the seeds start to grow for these characters? Because we as booksellers have been asking for more mysteries for middle grade readers oh, for so long hear. that we need more really good mysteries because mm -hmm. you know boys and girl readers yeah. always go for those yeah. and if we can find those really great mysteries so what drew you to these characters where did it start yeah well and i was what a spy draws you, oh, you know i was okay. a child that spied did you spy as a child i spied on my brother <laughs> exactly all the i time. spied on my brother <laughs> so my best friend down the street and i we had a spy club and we didn't okay. actually spy on people okay. but we made all kinds of sort of most wanted posters and made yeah. up stories about our neighbors yeah. and when I was teaching seventh grade I also noticed that kids love the mysteries and that I didn't yeah. have something to recommend to them that would be 
uh, age appropriate but still right, complex. Right. Sure, sure. And um, I, I, I read the series Kiki Strike um, oh, by Kirsten great. Miller, yeah. and I love them are good. so much. Those are good. So I really aspired to write something uh, along those lines that kind of filled that yeah. filled that yeah. hole with that. And I, I love the the, the two. They're, they're they're friends, but you know when they're getting more and more into what they're you know, like in this book, yeah. there's a there's a sort of a, a counselor they think is not quite on right. the up and up at right. their school, but they they have problems with their friendship yeah. and sort of you mm -hmm. know all the all the spying right. they're doing may get in the way yeah. of them being yeah. friends which was really a, a, a nice turn in the story but yeah. they do get it back together of course yeah know? I think yeah. from an adult perspective it's not a great friendship oh, yeah. but yeah. And it's right. somewhat painful but it has yeah for me that was the heart of it so yeah. I remember my own friendship ups and downs and the sort of power plays that go yeah. on between friends yeah. but also as a seventh grade teacher you're you have a front row seat to that kind of social uh, shifts and changes yeah, so right, right. yeah so that was something I definitely was really right. important to me when I was writing the book so having your own spy club when you were young mm -hmm. <laughs> but you, you can channel that seventh grade girl really well right I sort of yeah <laughs> I close my eyes and I go back but a lot of it you know being a teacher yourself being an English teacher and mm -hmm. and and working with seventh grade kids for a long time how has that informed not only these books themselves but your life as a writer they are in my head all the time the seventh, I am a seventh grader at heart. I never grew up. I, I, good, I good. stayed 12 and didn't get any older. Yeah. So there's that aspect of it. Um, but I, I think writing is kind of an extension of, of teaching. Mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. not writing any messages, obviously. I'm writing, um, I'm trying to write truth, right, you know, right. emotional truth. Sure. Um, but as a teacher, you know, I'm just sort of expanding, reaching out, and hopefully I'm entertaining as a teacher as well, yeah. and trying to yeah, be yeah, there for them, yeah. be a voice for them. So when you decided to write, and obviously because of your, your experiences as a teacher for this great, this age level, but when you, how long have you wanted to be a writer? And when you decided mm -hmm. that I'm gonna sit down and write this book or this story, did you always have this audience in mind? I didn't actually. So I, it took me a really long time. I'm, I started writing really late. So I wrote as a kid all the time. Yeah. I love mostly about cats, you know, all starring Great cats, subject. of course. Yeah. Yes, very important. <laughs> they started speaking French at some point, and that was, really Perfect. went downhill from there. But, I know. Um, I love cats who speak French. But I, I had a teacher. I lived in England. I, my family moved a lot. I lived in England. I had an amazing teacher in England, Sister Christina, ah. at a religious school, would come in yeah. and give us different prompts. And that's yeah. when I really decided that I loved writing. But then I come from a very practical family. Um, and uh, I felt like saying that you wanted to be a writer was saying like you wanted to be a rock star or something, uh -huh. that it was an entirely impractical thing. I didn't count whatever I was doing. I was writing all the time, yeah. but I didn't count what I was doing as writing, even if I played something. with stories. Yeah, yeah. So I started really late, and it was precisely because of my students that I that I got excited about writing. Yeah. When Once I thought about writing something for them, I was like, hey, you know, this sure, makes a lot sure. of sense. You know, I read on your bio that you moved a lot when you were a child, yeah. you know, when you were a kid. So yeah. did that influence you? Of course, living in different places, of course, informs you, opens your world up more, too. Yeah. But that must have has informed, you know, the characters you write about, what you right. what you were as a teacher and those kind of things. So right. uh, those experiences. So. Yeah, it's so hard for me. I've now lived in one place. As an adult, I haven't moved at all. Okay. <laughs> it's so funny. I'm like, no, I'm not um, going anywhere. But yeah. uh, the, I think the main influence is you, you're lonely when you move a lot. You're always the new kid. Um, and actually, the spy games were kind of part of like breaking the ice, right? Oh, like, sure. let's do this. Let's play yeah. these games or um, just sort of being in your head. I would play alone a lot. And so that, I think that is what shaped me as a writer. You're in your head a lot. You're making yeah. up things. You're, I had an entire fantasy life when I was yeah. 12 or 13. Like I lived in a different universe for part of that year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But now it's coming out. Now it's, it's coming, coming out. In books. Yeah. And we can, then we can Finally. share in your fantasy. Finally, so. a bit later, but yeah. <laughs> yeah right. So I read you the 2014 James Thurber House Children's Writer in Residence. Yes. How oh, cool. Tell us about that experience. Oh, because it was wonderful. That, um, what an honor, for one thing. Oh, uh, yes, yeah. it really was. So it tell was. us about that. 
Um, well, it's not too far from here either. It's no. in Columbus, Ohio. Right, right. They are. It's an incredible literary center, and you get to live in James, one of James. He moved around a lot too. You get to live in one of his childhood homes. It's a Vict haunted Victorian Ooh. mansion, so it's not for the faint of heart. You live up in the attic. Um, the Attic made famous uh, in My Life in Hard Times. Thurber's, uh, he tells this amazing oh, story wow. about, um, well, you have to read it, but there's <laughs> yeah. a, the night the ghost that got in. Okay. And um, and you you live there and you write there, but you also get to work at the summer camp that they have for writers, and that's a little bit like the the nerd camp that I was yeah, just at, yeah. where all these kids from all over different school districts who just love writing and reading come together, and they get to work with different teachers, and the yeah. author in residence is one of them. So, oh, that's so it's cool. pretty it's pretty that's neat. Cool. It's very moving to watch the kids um, find each other. Yeah. and get to share and they produce anthologies of their work and they give open mic readings and oh, it's that's so it, wonderful. and you work in the community yeah. as well to kids that never get to right. see an author and in libraries yeah. as well oh, that yeah. sounds like what a great experience yeah. for I you i was as just well back visiting kids. i couldn't stay oh, away oh that's so great yeah. that's so great yeah. so the book i read has been compared to rear window for kids so the wig in the window yeah, right so how do you feel way. about the little hitchcock in there you know i do love hitchcock i am a big <laughs> big fan and i was really happy yeah. with the cover because i sent them a yeah. um, with copy of, yeah. of that as well and yeah. and they were very kind and yeah were, were inspired yeah. by it too and I, th I think one of the things and, and and when you look at a book like this and this what you know detectives are being a spy and what you have to just you, know, you have to decipher what is truth and what is not and if you think about something you have to doubt your assumptions mm -hmm. about things and mm -hmm. I think that's what's great about your mysteries and I'm sure on the second one too mm -hmm. that kids have to have to be critical thinkers about what they assume about exactly. something. Exactly. Exactly. Which is yeah. which is really an important message. Yeah, yeah. and um, for me, even though that book is a is a mystery, it's also about uh, confidence and, and getting confidence yeah. Yeah. about wrestling with self doubt. Because to me, I read it also as a story of me as a writer of finding yeah. my voice a little bit, yeah. even though it's a wacky mystery. Yeah. You know, that's, that's part yeah. that boldness that right. that Sophie Young sort of grows into is. Yeah is part of you know finding her voice and her place and kind of standing up to her friend right. who is more powerful. So when you sit down to write, do you outline, okay, as, as an English teacher mm. in your former profession, yeah. do you, you tell your kids how to do it? Or that are you a curse, of, I'll tell oh, you that. Well, that's why, I'm, that's why I'm always asked this uh -huh. question. Do you outline or is it um, maybe just a skeletal thing and you let it, the story take yeah. you where it's going to go like it does for the reader? Well, I feel too new at this to answer. The first book was uh, a big old mess that I just, I didn't outline it at all, which is crazy. It's a mystery. <laughs> so I didn't even know I was writing a mystery, I think. I think I thought I was writing like a friendship wow, that's story. Really, that's, that's and then, that's really interesting. I know, so I wrote yeah. an entire draft of just sort yeah. of like adventures. I didn't know what I was doing. And then I shaped it later into yeah. a mystery. So I had a lot to work with. So I didn't have an outline then, but I did, did kind of a reverse outline. Mm -hmm. I kind of went back and shaped it all. Um, and then put in all the clues and turned yeah, it into a mystery. Yeah. Um, the second time I was like, well, I'm not doing that again. That was not the efficient way to write a mystery. So I outlined the tiara on the terrace within okay. an inch of its life. And okay. then I, it, I really would freeze up at certain points when I wanted to veer in a different direction. Mm -hmm. I'd be like, well, that's not what I said in my outline, you know. So yeah. that teacher in me was, uh, was a curse, was that, oh, okay. uh, that critical kind of okay. thought wasn't helpful. So I uh, eventually threw out the outline okay. and kind of, you know, did a combination of okay. dancing. Okay, all right, I like, okay, that's yeah. good. Good answer. Good answer. Yeah. Okay, and mm -hmm. this book is coming out. What's the date? Yeah. Oh, uh, January fifth. January fifth. January fifth. Okay, 5th, great. Right around Perfect. the rosemary yeah. time. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. A lot of pageantry. Yeah. Man gets good. murdered by a giant dancing animatronic some more. Oh. Um, but everyone great. thinks it's an accident. But young and yang. They yeah. know differently. I won't. So. You got to be killed by something. I guess a giant s'more was is. not too bad. So, yeah. yeah, you know, <laughs> well, it's it's so, no, it sounds great though. <laughs> yeah. So I hope this will be featured. I mean, out in Pasadena, it'll be huge. I'm sure. I, I hope so. I hope so. The, okay. I really wrote it a lot for you know Pasadena is where yeah. I live, and oh, it's I really know. fun to that's really be great. able to. Yeah. Well, I'm sure it, it, the serials will continue. So do you have ideas for the next book or something else that you're writing? I do. You know, I don't really think of this as a series. Yeah. I have write each one I've done individually. So I think of this one more as a companion. Um, I yeah. have a third idea that is very fun to me. Mm -hmm. um, but since, just as I was saying, I haven't written this. I just, The Wing in the Window is literally the first thing I wrote. 
so I'm really enjoying, right now I'm working on two other middle grade things sort okay. of at the same time. All right. And I um, might get back to that, that third, okay. but it, we'll, see. we'll see how this one does. Okay, all mm -hmm. right. Okay, quick quiz at the end here. So uh -oh. this is lightning round. Uh -oh. This is all book related. So whatever comes to mind, that's, that's your answer. Okay. okay. Favorite book when you were young? Judy Bloom's Blubber. Favorite book you love to use with your students when you're teaching? I read Wall. The okay. Red Ball series. All right. They love they Ryan love that. Great. Mm -hmm. Okay, how about a book you've been an evangelist for? Any book that you've ever read that you could not tell enough people they had to read? Well, I'm a major evangelist for the Kiki Strike series okay. I, because right. of the mysteries. I sure. am. Well, Kristen, thank you so much. It Thanks. Was and a con pleasure. Congratulations. We can't wait for the second book in the I'm series. I'm really looking forward to it. I'm so yeah. proud of it. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for talking with me. Thank you. What a great conversation with middle grade author Kristen Kitcher about our mystery, The Wig in the Window. And next, author Kate Hannigan. <laughs>